Confederate President Jefferson Davis sends thousands of rebel troops to Manassas, Virginia to defend against a Union invasion. North Alabama, fall in! A tyrant has invaded your soil. Rally to the standard of your state and country! The Confederate battle plan simply begins by defending the borders it shares with the North. But Jefferson Davis, like Lincoln, is under pressure to attack his enemy's capital. An ambitious plan to engage the Union troops is fueled by a Southern attitude of confidence and superiority. Any man from Alabama is worth at least three yanks. We'll be home in a week. Now, what the rebel troops may lack in numbers and equipment, they make up for with a rebel pride, a fierce determination to hold on to their Southern way of life no matter the consequence. With a Confederate army rallying just 30 miles from Washington and Union troops enlistments ending soon, Lincoln is forced to take immediate action. I'll implement this immediately and we will begin building up. But the Union's top general, Irwin McDowell, is reluctant to move on the rebels. Board to Richmond. You want me to attack Richmond within a month? I want you to attack Manassas within a month. <clears throat> now, Mr. President, with my plan, we will cut off the Confederacy from trade and slowly squeeze the life out of them. So Winfield Scott has a plan. And it's a two-pronged assault on the southern economy by uh, shutting down the Port of New Orleans and all the ports on the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. It becomes known as the Anaconda Plan. But the blockade, man, I mean, that's going to take, you know, could take years. That's not something Lincoln wants to hear. We must take action now. But our troops are green, sir. You are all green alike. History often paints President Lincoln as a patient, cool-headed, almost stoic politician. But at the beginning of the war, he's often brash, short-tempered, even obstinate. I must go and prepare the army. Now, when his generals reject the call for immediate action in favor of a long-term sustainable strategy, Lincoln ignores their advice. He insists they take the fight into enemy territory. It's a rookie mistake that will cost him and the Union greatly. With his army on the march to Manassas, Lincoln faces another threat from inside Washington, D.C. Confederate spies have infiltrated every corner of the Capitol, from saloons to bedrooms. Are the soldiers finally going to be attacking the rebels? Yes, indeed. Rose O'Neill Greenhow was a uh, matron of Washington, D.C. society. She was very wealthy, very connected. How many soldiers are going to be risking their lives for us, Henry? I want to pray for every one of them. <laughs> 35,000 prayers? <gasps> <laughs> Rose used her uh, connections prior to the war um, to sort of cultivate her sources and use that information for the Confederacy going forward. Thanks to Rose Greenhouse's efforts, the Confederates at Manassas are able to prepare for the Union attack. At dawn, McDowell attacks Beauregard with 35,000 Union troops and still catches the Confederates off guard. Overwhelmed by the surprise attack, rebel forces are easy prey. Civilians come to the battle, they bring picnic baskets, and they set up on a nearby field with the thought that they're going to watch a brief, maybe even bloodless encounter that will swiftly bring this whole idea of secession and a nascent Confederacy to a quick end. There's this naivete, just a lack of understanding about war. People don't get how horrible it's going to be. Can you see anything, Senator? Well, one side's in retreat. Which one, I can't say. Civilians aren't the only ones who can't follow the action. When Americans fight Americans, both sides struggle to identify the enemy. It's chaos. There are northern troops dressed in gray uniforms, southern troops dressed in blue uniforms. There are guys with green uniforms. You got the zouaves in their crazy pantaloon pants running around. No one knows who's who.
That's our boys. This way. Take aim. Colonel William Tecumseh Sherman sends an Alabama regiment into chaos. Across the battlefield, the rebels are forced back. Retreat! Retreat! The South's dream of a new Confederate nation is in jeopardy. But one rebel general stands in the way of a Union stampede. Northern spectators gather at Bull Run to see Abraham Lincoln's army overrun the Confederate rebels and save the Union. Colonel William Tecumseh Sherman is one man committed to preserving the Union at any cost. Sherman is passionate and driven and has a tremendous resentment on the part of Northerners like himself that the Southerners have caused this in his eyes. Colonel Sherman, cross that hill. Yes, sir. This way, man, this way. As Confederate casualties mount, General Barnard B. orders his South Carolina brigade to fall back. Retreat, retreat. With the Confederates in retreat, Erwin McDowell's Union forces control the battlefield, but some rebels aren't ready to give up. General Thomas J. Jackson, an eccentric, God-fearing general from Virginia, seizes the high ground at Henry House Hill and refuses to move. We are in retreat, son. Sir. We will give them the bayonet. Jackson was a deeply religious man, and he had a very specific idea of his relationship with God. He said, when I'm in the heat of battle, I don't feel even remotely afraid. You would see him sitting on his horse with his hand in the air praying. According to his purpose, all things work together for General, your hand. Nearly a scratch. He was one of those guys who believes, you know, God's got a, a day in mind when he's going to kill you. So when there are artillery shells exploding around you, well, you know, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And that gave him a kind of cool head on the battlefield, which his men rallied around. Turn them down! Jackson standing there like a stone wall. Let us determine to die here today for your lives. Men, hold your fire until they come within 50 yards. And when you charge, yell like fury. Jackson's brave stand inspires the retreating rebels to stop and mount a counterattack, shifting the tide of battle. For the first time, the Confederates unleash their demonic rebel yell, terrifying the Yankees into a full retreat back across to Bull Run, directly through the picnicking spectators. Everybody's in, in complete panic. Many of them drown in Bull Run Creek on their way to escape. Uh, many others are captured by Confederate soldiers and, and brought to Richmond prisons. 
This battle causes the rapid evaporation of this idea that the war can be quick and bloodless. Oh, very gloomy is the house of woe, where tears are falling while the bell is knelling. A sense of mystery, the spirit daunted and said, the place is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Manassas is a disaster, Mr. President. <coughs> Draft an official message. I need 500,000 fresh troops and a competent commander. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.